I'm going to talk about um, the composable DHT, so making the DHT more composable in order to enable more application to join uh, the lib P2P DHT ecosystem. So just a disclaimer, um, here be dragons. Uh, this is a very, a very early design prototype and the, the, the goal of the presentation is to gather feedback and interest maybe from the community on whether this project would be worth um, working on. So first, let me introduce Kad the Kademlia DHT in a single slide. Um, yeah, le let, me know, let me know as it goes, if it's not clear, so that uh, we're on a strong basis. So a DHT is a decentralized overlay network um, that is useful to route stuff. So in uh, lib P2P or IPFS, we use it for peer routing and content routing uh, for IPFS. Um, and in this DHT, um, everything, so all the nodes, all the content, um, have a name in a unified namespace, which in our case is a 256-bit um, G-string. Um, and for, it, it's important for each node to have a unique identifier that um, is in this key space in order to determine the node's um, location inside the key space and in order to compute the distance between nodes or node and content or between any two keys um, in this key space. And the distance mechanism that is used is the XOR distance, which is very interesting, but I'm not gonna get uh, too deep into it, but if you, if, if you would like to talk more about it, I'm very enthusiastic and please come to me after. Um, now, each node needs to uh, know some other peers in order to be part of the network and for the routing to work in the network, which is called a routing table. And uh, the routing table are made of buckets. Um, and so in each bucket, a node will store um, other peer, peer IDs whose um, so, for instance, in the bucket zero, I will store nodes whose node identifier has a zero uh, common prefix. And in bucket 10, I will store nodes that have um, 10 bits common prefix with my own identity. And now that it works, um, we can do iterative lookups, which means that if I'm looking for a specific key, I look in my own routing table which are the closest peers to this specific key I'm looking for. It might be far away from me, but I will get closer. And so I will contact the closest peer that I know. And this peer is gonna tell me, okay, I know another peer that is closer to this key. And then I'm gonna contact this new peer and eventually I'm gonna find the content I'm looking for. And so that's how routing works in the Kademlia DHT. So both for peer routing and content routing. And on the right hand side, you can see the, an example of a Kademlia binary tree to represent uh, the distance. Um, so here in this toy example, we have um, a key space of six bits. So that's the um, right column. And uh, it's, so a binary tree is a prefix tree and it determines the, helps to determine the, the distance between the node. Um, I'll get uh, more into it later. Now, um, let's talk about, so that was more the um, introduction about the Kademlia DHT. And now let's talk about the lib P2P Kademlia DHT protocol. So um, in the state it is currently, um, the lib P2P Kademlia DHT protocol is very IPFS centric, which means that if you are part of the DHT, you will be asked to store um, IPFS provider records and to serve them. So you have to work for the DHT. Um, but also, um, the Kademlia DHT is a core component of lib P2P because it serves uh, as the peer routing component. But now it means that, so IPFS is dependent on, on lib P2P and that's good. But now lib P2P is also dependent on IPFS because this, the DHT lives right between uh, lib P2P and IPFS because it has some IPFS features and it, the distinction is, isn't very clear. And also the protocol isn't future proof 
which means that if we want to modify some stuff in the protocol, which we will eventually do because everything evolves, we need to break the DHT and go through a painful migration. And so that's yeah, why the Kademlia DHT protocol maybe isn't that good. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll try to address that. So now if we take an example, say I want to build a P2P messaging app using lib P2P, only lib P2P, I don't care about IPFS now. Um, I want to use just um, peer routing in order to send messages to remote peers um, and maybe hole punching as well. And maybe I want to have uh, to use a DHT, have some specific RPC to find a rendezvous point for a group chat so that everyone that has the key can just meet um, at a specific point. But I don't want to store IPFS data uh, because it's just not the goal of my application. So what I could do is either I could take um, Kademlia uh, implementation uh, of lib P2P, but then I would store IPFS data, or I could fork it, remove all the IPFS stuff, but then IPFS would get hurt. Because now if a lot of applications are doing this, maybe, I don't know, we have uh, only 10% of the lib P2P DHT nodes um, that are IPFS nodes. If I want to store some IPFS content, I'm going to find the 20 closest node. And maybe uh, um, most of the node will not run the IPFS um, uh, protocol. And so I will not be able to store my content with them. And so it's, it's getting hard. And so the, the application building on top of lib lib P2P would have to build their own DHT implementation and have their own bootstrapper peers, and that's not really ideal. So the current stack we have is, uh, as I said, so we have the IPFS implementation on top. That depends on um, CAD DHT for routing, which uh, uses lib P2P to communicate. And so we have the IPFS implementation is obviously in IPFS LAN, lib P2P in lib P2P LAN, but CAD DHT is in between. It's not clear. It's supposed to be part of lib P2P, but it has a lot of IPFS-centric features. Now we can improve the stack and break the DHT into two parts so that we have the lib P2P part that would contain a bare-bone DHT, only responsible for peer routing, and an IPFS DHT that would make use of the bare-bone DHT for peer routing, but so the protocol would be different. And so now we can have other implementation building on top of this bare-bone DHT and have uh, open the um, environment to new uh, application. However, it doesn't work like this because it's exactly what I said before when I said that you can just fork out and remove IPFS stuff from, from the DHT. Um, the provide will not work because you will not find enough IPFS peers to store your content and so the content will not be discoverable. So we need to change um, just um, uh, this um, IPFS DHT uh, component in order to, to make it work. So now, yeah, in order to adapt the protocol, um, uh, we need to allocate IPFS content on IPFS nodes only, not on, on the other node. And when looking up for some IPFS content, you should query only IPFS peers, not all the lib P2P DHT peers. And same for all of the other applications. And, but the peer routing would work exactly the same way. So if you're looking for a peer, you will find it exactly the same way. But now we got to find a way to segregate application. How do I make sure that my RPC for my application I, uh, get connected only to the peers that are running my application and make sure that the routing is sound and I'm actually looking, uh, finding what I'm looking for. So now we need to introduce features and protocol. So a feature can be defined as, as an RPC or a set of RPCs. Um, a protocol can be defined as a set of features, so multiple features. So if we take an example, um, a feature could be um, content on IPFS, so how do I find content? How do I provide content? So that's a feature. Maybe IP, uh, IPNS is another feature. And then the IPFS protocol is the set of 
the both IPFS content and IPNS. So that would be the IPFS DHT protocol. And um, in a protocol, we need to order the features according to the importance for this protocol. So maybe in IPFS, we say that content is more important than IPNS. Yeah. And uh, when communicating with the remote peers, I will indicate to this remote peer uh, which features, which RPCs I support. And um, in the routing table now, we will need to track uh, one additional information. So for now, we track the peer ID and the multi-address. Now we will also track the set of supported features. And now um, we need to change slightly the way the routing table selection process works. Because now the selection process is very simple. It's just seniority, which means that if I have some empty spots in my bucket, and I learn about a new peers that would belong to this bucket, then I just take them. And if the bucket is full, I cannot accept new peers and I have to wait for peers to go offline in order to accept new peers. So basically, if you're in the bucket, you're gonna stay there forever until you, you go out. And now, if we add another criteria um, about the feature, so we want to make sure that the peers that are running the same feature as us um, are in our routing table in priority, which means that if I am an IPFS node, um, I may be connected to all of the other nodes from all of the other IPFS, uh, sorry, LIP2P applications, but I mostly care about other IPFS nodes because that's um, what I'm using. I'm using the uh, fine content, IPNS features, and so on. And so I want to be directly connected with them uh, in order for my features to work. And that's how um, content routing in the DHT work. You need to be strongly connected with the nodes um, that speak the same language as you. And so now, if we go through an example, um, so that's Kademlia, uh, let's say, so the right hand, the rightmost column is all of the peers that are in the network which are identified by, by this um, a bit string of length six. And now, if we, if we say that the yellow nodes um, have a specific feature, let's say they speak IPFS, and all of the white nodes don't speak IPFS. So maybe just a distinction, um, the nodes are only on the uh, rightmost column. The, the, all the other nodes uh, that makes up this tree are just um, intermediary, um, like a way to compute the distance. They are not actual um, computers. And if we take as a reference the nodes uh, with an arrow, so 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, um, we're going to compute uh, the nodes that would fit um, inside its bucket. So let's start with uh, the bucket number 4 which means that uh, we have four bits in common. We have a four bit prefix in common. So in this case, zero, one, zero, zero. And um, let's say we have, um, we want to store, the bucket size is two. So we need to store two peers in each bucket at most. And now we have exactly two peers matching this prefix, zero, one, zero, zero. So we're gonna take them and add them to the bucket number four. Now going to bucket number three, there is only one peer that is matching the three bits prefix, zero, one, zero. So it's fine, we have uh, enough space in our routing table. We just take it and add it. Now, um, for the bucket number two, there are plenty of peers that would match there. So it's all of the peers that start with zero, one. Uh, so um, if we look at this, uh, it's all of the peers that are uh, here and that are the, um, basically the children of 0, 1, 1. And now we get to choose. So in the old Kademlia, we, we would just take the first peers that we discover, but now we can choose. So we see, hey, there's a yellow peer there and we prefer it because they speak IPFS and we speak IPFS too. So let's select this one. And then um, we go to bucket number one. 
So we, we do the same. Uh, we have the choice, so we take the yellow pier when possible. And then going to bucket number zero, so the lower half of the tree, um, there are enough yellow peers so that we can select only yellow peers. And so the routing table will look like this. So we'll have, in prior, so where possible, we will select only uh, the yellow peers. And so it means that if we only take the yellow peers in here, we get a sub DHT, which exactly works. It is academia DHT, but it, it's just a subset. But it means that if we take this uh, routing table and just drop all of the white peers, and just take the yellow ones, we have a full working DHT. And so it means that the IPFS DHT is a sub DHT of the lib P2P DHT. And so now, how do the query process work? So in a peer lookup, when you're looking for a peer, you indicate your features priority. So that if I speak IPFS, for instance, and I'm looking for some peers, um, the remote peers that I'm gonna contact will know that I speak IPFS, and if they have some IPFS peers in their routing table, they're gonna give it to me because they know that I prefer the IPFS speaking peers. And um, the peers I will contact first, so as my routing table is likely to contain a lot of other IPFS peers, the peers I will be contacting will likely be also IPFS peers and will also in turn have IPFS peers in their own routing table. So it's like a smaller, smaller group um, within the larger DHT. And so when I, when I request for some IPFS content, I'm gonna query an IPFS node that is gonna give me, uh, return me another IPFS node and it will only stay in this very sub DHT. And the routing will work because it is a proper DHT and the routing is sound there. And so now we can see, so it's another representation of um, how to pick uh, peers to fill the routing table. Um, uh, let's say now that we have multiple features, so there is not just IPFS and not IPFS. Um, so we have here a two-dimensional uh, distance projection of some peers in the Academia key space. So we're interested in the yellow one, that's the reference node. And um, we can draw some circles that represent the bucket. So the larger circles are bucket number zero, one, and so on. And the closer buckets are the peer that are close to you, that share a longer prefix with you. And so it's the higher ID bucket. And now we can split um, we can split uh, this uh, two-dimensional uh, representation into three different planes. And so we have the peer that speak exactly the same protocol um, at the top. So let's say they, so I'm an IPFS peer and at the top they speak the IPFS protocol. So they would be my favorite friends. And then below there is a common feature. So maybe those peers will speak IPNS because some other application is using IPNS, but maybe not um, doing content routing um, for like IPFS. So I will like them, but not as much as the others. And then at the bottom, we have peers that have no common feature. They are running a totally different application, but they are here and they participate in DHT um, routing. And the way I will select the peers is, um, first I will look um, in, at the top layer and I will just say, okay, I'm going to take them all because I have enough space in my buckets to um, select all of the peers that are there. I'm going to pick, I'm going to fill in my buckets with the top layer in priority. Then if I have some space left in my buckets, I'm going to go in the second layer. And even if, and then if my buckets still aren't full, I'm going to try to complete them with the last bucket. But so we're going to see that, um, most of the peers will be running the same features as we do. And um, so that's just a way to select the peer. So now if we see on the left-hand side, 
um, it's a way to select which one of the peers I would select, not just based on seniority, but with another criteria. And it totally works for like the big D, um, LP2P DHT. Now, how does the stack uh, change? So you can note now that I added a routing table component between the barebone DHT and LP2P that um, would be implemented by the application. So for instance, IPFS. And the routing table can be customized and tailored to fit the, the needs of the application. So for instance, you can choose the bucket size, you can choose if you want to favor, to have more criteria for the routing table, to have maybe prefer um, nodes that have a low latency, so that are close to you, or you can just do anything as long as uh, the routing table implementation follows the simple interface with which the barebone DHT um, will interact. And this interface is uh, basically, so the routing table must track the remote, peer, remote peers features. It must have reachable peers in every single bucket, um, if possible. And it must implement a find end closes to find the end closest peers to um, a specific key, and additionally with um, a given feature. So now how does the IPFS provide operation works? So we have at the top, let's say Kubo, that is gonna tell the DHT, okay, I have this block, can you please advertise that I have this CID? The DHT protocol will say, fine. It will ask the barebone DHT, okay, can you give me the 20 closest peers to this CID? The barebone DHT is gonna do so by looking up the closest peer in, in its own routing table, and then sending messages um, using lip P2P to find the closest peers. Once it has it, it will tell the DHT protocol, there you go, you have the 20 closest peers. And the DHT, so the IPFS DHT protocol will say, okay, thanks. And now it's gonna send using directly lip P2P um, um, an IPFS specific RPC uh, saying, please store this provider record for me. And then it's going to return to um, the application Kubo to say, okay, it's done. Um, now we also need to be careful to prevent network splits because um, if I have um, a specific feature that is not in my top priorities and this specific feature isn't in another application stack top priority, um, then we could have a network split on this very specific um, RFC, which means that I will not know the same peers, I will not be connected to the same peers than another application for the same feature, for the same RPC. Um, in the end, the decision is free to the feature designer to decide, so when designing the routing table to uh, decide whether, what should this N be? Because we want to make sure to have at least N peers uh, in each of the buckets. But in most applications, it will not be a big deal because um, simply you will, um, so most of the node you will speak to will speak exactly the same protocol as you having the exact same of feat set of features, and so you can fill your bucket with all of the features. But in the worst case, um, uh, yeah, the, the node running a common feature will be split into multiple, let's say, sub-partitions, but uh, we can correct that also with a find feature feature, um, which is um, if you're, basically if you join uh, the DHT network, you can use any bootstrapper, and now you're looking for peers that speak the same language as you. You're an IPFS node, you join using another bootstrapper and you don't know any other IPFS node. You can just send random queries asking random people, hey, do you know someone that is using IPFS? And once you've found someone, you can fill in your routing table and converge to a stable state. So this can be implemented as a feature. And um, yeah. Um, concerning the bootstrapper nodes, um, any bootstrapper node can be used to join, could be used to join the DHT. So it could be the bootstrapper node from IPFS or from any other application. You join the DHT and then 
you need to find nodes running your feature, either using the find feature, or even maybe the bootstrapper node can say, okay, you joined the network, what protocol are you running? I know, pe I know people running many different protocols, I can give you uh, what you want. Um, so each protocol can have its own bootstrap node. And so the main benefits that this will give is it would enable much more application to make use of the lib P2P DHT um, just as a routing component for um, lib P2P application. We can see that we have global connectivity in lib P2P. It would be great if we can have also um, a global routability. Um, it also, also a big improvement as it gives um, DHT protocol agility, which means that, for instance, within IPFS, we'll be able to make the DHT protocol evolve, add new RPCs, um, without going through uh, a painful migration every time. So we can, when we want to add a new RPC, for instance, for double hashing, we can just add a feature, it's easy, and then for some time we run both features, so we, it, it means still that we need to duplicate the data for some time, but there is no security risk, and then after some time we can just drop the old feature. Um, another benefit is DHT protocol interoperability, which means that maybe the day um, Filecoin decides to advertise content on the DHT, but maybe not doing um, IPNS or other stuff, they can just advertise um, uh, their, their content on the same DHT without having to implement everything that IPFS is doing. It means that we also have increased security because more peers are uh, present in the DHT, which means that uh, it will be much more expensive to do Sybil attacks. You will need to uh, start a lot of additional peers um, because the network is just bigger. And we have a clear distinction between IPFS and lib P2P on the side, let's say, ownership of the code or who is responsible of what, we get more clarity. Um, so for the protocol upgrade, I already touched on this. And for the protocol interoperability, um, yeah, so uh, if yeah, Falcon was to add or to use the DHT to advertise its data, it wouldn't need to support every single IPFS capability. So it would be an easy way to do so. And a retrieval client would need to be only one DHT client instead of having like one DHT client for IPFS and one for Filecoin, if Filecoin is a distinct, uh, uses its distinct DHT. Or um, for instance, we could have some interoperability. I don't have any application in mind, but between Filecoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, or any lib P2P user, if someone wants to build an application that would link the network and the routing there would be possible. Um, now the trade-off, so what does it cost? Uh, so basically we'll have a larger routing table because um, so the, let's say the IPFS DHT would still be the same size and so the request would still um, take the same time. I mean, nothing would change, but it's just you need to keep track of more peers because you will keep track of peers that don't run the very same application as you. But it is limited um, by login, just by design of the DHT. So it means that uh, it will grow a bit, but it's very scalable. So it means um, the additional storage would be login and being the size of the network, total number of users. And the refresh process would also be slightly more expensive, uh, same order of growth. But um, even though there are more peers in the network, IPFS wouldn't get slower because they are the same IPFS nodes, the same number. So you just um, contact them all and you don't need to go through other peers to reach your IPFS node. Uh, we also get the same routing guarantees and, um, as I said, a, an increased security um, level. So the minimal requirement to, to have this is to run lib P2P. I think, I mean, as this is a general DHT protocol, it could also be implemented without, but the goal is to have, let's say, one lib P2P um, DHT implementation. Uh, we need peer IDs. We need a standardized, standardized peer record. So just, yeah, uh, let's say all agree that the peer record is a peer ID mapping to a multi-address. 
and a feature. But then it's possible, totally possible, if we want to do signed uh, peer records in the future to add it as a feature. It will not be in the minimal requirement set, but let's say IPFS wants to do it. It's possible to add it very easily. And we also need a unified feature namespace to make sure that there is no conflict between uh, features. <clears throat> so, um, yet to conclude this uh, presentation, uh, the, so the main um, um, contribution is that we can enable other lib P2P app to use uh, the DHT and to do peer routing without, um, without hurting IPFS. We can bring more uh, DHT protocol agility and uh, so it means IPFS protocol can evolve over time and we add interoperability to interact with other networks. Um, the only changes that we make are in the routing table selection process. Um, and so we, we need to, we can introduce new RPCs as features and integrate them into protocols. And um, finally, we really draw a clear line between IPFS and lib P2P in the DHT and make sure that, uh, let's say, the peer routing component are part of lib P2P and lib P2P only. We don't have um, IPFS, um, an IPFS-centric uh, DHT. So uh, there is a um, Notion document for now. It's not very up-to-date, but um, yeah, I will update it. And so all the, the update will leave um, in this Notion page for now. So yeah, that was my talk. Now I'm happy to answer any question or if you have any feedback. Uh, maybe quick uh, clarification around what you, you, what you envision as a feature. Would that be IPFS as a feature or uh, distinct sub-features of IPFS itself, like content uh, uh, provider records being one feature, IPNS records being other feature. What do you mean, uh, what the resolution of the feature uh, in that uh, peer record, right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, would be? Um, yeah, excellent question. So I'd say that IPFS would have multiple features, so IPFS could be the set of feature, so like a protocol, and the set of feature that IPFS would have, I think, as you said, is the provider record, IPNS. Hole punching can also be a feature. And maybe other, I forget, but just not everything that is not essential to lib P2P and that is not peer routing. Would it have different, so it's, it's a way of, you can think of it as a way of filtering down your DHT into the smaller DHT to support stuff you care about, right? Yeah. Uh, so would, would you would we use it for like for example uh, scoping it down to certain transfer protocols? Um, yeah, th that that could be a feature. Okay. So that, for instance, for IPFS, we could say, okay, now we have provider records plus a data transfer method. Right. Yeah. And that's a new feature, and so we can evolve the IPFS protocol to contain this extra information. Nice. Without going through a painful migration. Yeah. 